Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and uh, I had a subscriber kind of ask a question in another video I did just a little bit ago. I'll flip it in here. Uh, and he basically wants to know, but doesn't testosterone levels, don't test levels affect muscle gain? So someone who has more testosterone is going to have more muscle, they're going to gain more muscle from training, they're going to have more muscle naturally. So uh, let me put on my plus five out of weapon smithing. See if I can skill up my crafting a little bit and let's talk about that. All right, uh, there's a lot of confusion here because what people need to understand is that the, the significant gains you see in muscle mass uh, from people using anabolics and using ex additional exogenous testosterone is not the same uh, as the amount your body produces naturally because people who are putting tests into their body exogenously aren't increasing their testosterone 30, 40% to gain muscle. Uh, they're usually increasing it many times over to make significant gains in muscle. Uh, furthermore, another point that needs to be considered here is that uh, testosterone levels within the normal range do increase muscle mass a little bit. But what we don't really have is a lot of evidence that they increase training response. And this is the one that's really gonna blow people's minds. And I think this gets really further emphasized uh, by the fact that when we give people very large amounts of exogenous testosterone in human studies, they gain large amounts of muscle while being sedentary. Right? It has nothing to do with training. There are people who quit lifting weights and they gain muscle while being sedentary. Uh, that has nothing to do with training response. And, and what I mean by that is that I, I honestly believe, based upon the different things I've seen, that there isn't necessarily a synergy uh, between the two, meaning uh, if you're going to gain X amount of muscle from putting testosterone into your body and X amount of muscle from lifting weights, the muscle you gained is the sum total of the two. It doesn't like multiply and stack up, meaning if you were going to gain two pounds of muscle in any given number of months from the, the testosterone and one muscle from the training, you don't gain more than three. You gain three pounds of muscle. You don't gain five pounds, you don't gain six pounds. It's not like the two added together gives you a big addition. There's nothing like magical about it. There's not like a synergy. I don't believe that uh, anabolics or testosterone increase training response. They only increase uh, basically muscle growth itself. And there's a big difference between the two because muscles grow on their own due to hormones and things in the body that's completely independent of your training. Meaning uh, as you get older and grow up, your muscles get bigger. Uh, if you overeat, your muscles get bigger. If you go on testosterone, your muscles get bigger. These things are independent from weightlifting and exercise. Uh, and how much are we talking about? Well, remember, guys, the studies that we've looked at in the past uh, that I've shown you guys, there's been multiple variations of Some people have linked studies that I haven't linked because they're all similar studies, and people need to remember that. There's a dozen different studies on this. I happen to just have one or two that I like to link. It doesn't mean there aren't others that didn't say that similar things. Uh, so they get confused a little bit because there's been quite a few now at this point kind of given similar results But the studies we've seen when uh, Healthy young men who have been lifting weights for at least a year were given 600 milligrams of testosterone in studies here in the United States using American grade uh, Pharmaceutical grade stuff under the care of medical doctors and researchers and they're given 600 milligrams of testosterone and they stopped lifting weights. They gained an average of 18 pounds of muscle in 20 weeks. Well, we know that noob gains aren't even that high. 20 weeks is basically five months. Noobs expect to gain somewhere, depending on their genetics and how hard they train, uh, during their noob gain phase, one to two pounds of muscle per month. So in five months, you would expect a noob to gain somewhere between five and 10 pounds of muscle. That's normal. These guys gained 18 without lifting weights. And these were guys who'd already had their noob gains. These were guys who had been lifting weights for at least a year. And then they stopped lifting and went on the testosterone. What we need to consider there, a lot of guys say, okay, so yeah, testosterone means more muscle. But you need to understand these guys weren't down in the normal range. There's a big, big difference. Uh, 600 milligrams of testosterone when you can, is going to put your uh, test level somewhere between like 2,500 and 3,000 nanograms per deciliter. The average male has around 500. Now the normal range is considered to be 300 to 1,000, but only very rare individuals have like a 700 to 1,000. That's very rare. Like 5%, maybe 10% of the healthy male population ever see levels like that. The average male is around 500. 
all right? And that's at the peak of the day. That's usually early in the morning for them, and then it goes down at night. So someone who might be 500 in the morning might be as low as 250 or 300 by the evening time. When people are given an injection, that's a once a week depot in these studies. That's bringing it up to about 3,000, 24 to, uh, to 48 hours out, and then it tapers down to about 2,500 through the week. So they don't drop to like 250 or 300 later in the evening. And so that's a big difference. We're talking about 500 being the peak. 500 being the peak, right? And when you understand that, it explains why we see these differences uh, on TRT. Because these guys are 500 at the peak and maybe drop into 250 or 300 in the evening. These other guys are still sitting at 2,500 through the evening. They're not dropping down to five times 300 to 1,500. They're still sitting at 2,500 at night during that growth window when you're sleeping, in the morning, during training time, all the time. All right, that is a much, much higher net testosterone level throughout the week. It's not just, oh, you know, five times the normal level. No, it's five times the peak of the normal level sustained. Instead of this undulation through the day, it's just up. All right, so that's misleading if we go purely off the peak levels of nanograms per deciliter because it's actually higher than the average for the day. It's, it's five times the peak of the day. That's why when we look at studies, men in the normal range uh, if they drop way below the normal range, their you know their levels start dropping down. The amount of muscle they gain drops down. But if they're in the normal range, you just see a little flat curve, meaning guys with really high testosterone levels probably only gain muscle about 10 or 15 percent faster than men down kind of at the lower end of the normal range. It's a small difference. You know, it's not like uh, guys gain double the amount of muscle who are at the higher end of the range. They don't gain like double the muscle automatically. Uh, so when people are thinking testosterone is the only factor, it's not. There's a lot of other factors in the body involved. Um, the problem with a lot of this is that when levels get really, really high, we bypass that, meaning we bypass some of those other factors because you have so much activity um, at the androgen receptor in the muscle cell uh, that you get this massive release of IGF-1 in the muscle cell nuclei that forces growth. Uh, is it's you know it's very significant and the thing to consider there um, even then the guys who were taking 600 milligrams of testosterone you got to keep in mind they're at five or six times the normal range right five or six times the normal range they're only gaining muscle at around double the rate the guys who were lifting weights were you know, it's not, you don't gain muscle five times faster than normal because your testosterone is five times above normal. So accordingly, if your testosterone levels go up 20%, say you're at 500 and you go to 600, that's 20% increase. So 500 nanograms per deciliter up to 600, you know, with the normal range being 300 to 1,000, the considered the physiological normal range, you don't gain 20% more muscle automatically. You know, your muscle gains might go up 5%. They might go up 2%. They might not go up at all because you're talking about small variations. Now, what's interesting is that when we put guys on TRT down around 125 milligrams, whose peak levels just go up to like 600 and stay there throughout the week, right? They gain more muscle in the studies we've seen than guys who are at similar levels at their peak of the day and stay there. Or, I mean, guys who are at their, the, the similar levels at the peak of the day. So why then do guys on TRT gain a little more muscle? Because their levels don't undulate through the day. They stay peaked. All right. Their testosterone levels are high when they wake up. Their testosterone levels are high when they're training. They're high post-training. They're high when they're sleeping at night growing. They're high all the time. So they tend to gain a little more muscle mass in the studies I've seen than guys who are producing similar levels on their own. Why? Because the actual TRT keeps their net levels over the 24-hour period higher, even though their peak levels are the same, because there's no peak with it. So again, you're like this through the day, the guys on TRT are just right here. They tend to gain a little more muscle. But the thing is, when you're in the normal range, it's not massive differences in muscle mass, and that's where this, there's this big confusion. Um, it's a little bit of difference. So guys with higher testosterone gain a little more muscle. They recover a little faster. But it's not like night and day. It's not dramatic differences. There are a lot of other genetic factors that affect how much muscle you gain and your training response and everything else. Now, that being said, 
training response is a different animal. All right, your training response is its own set of uh, responses your body makes to training, and that's very genetic. And it's it's my opinion, all right, it's my opinion just based on looking at the different things I've seen over the years that your training response is completely separate from your testosterone levels. All right, you're going to gain a given amount of muscle from training a certain way and increasing your workload a certain amount and doing so much work in the gym, sleeping, recovering from it. I believe that's a separate set of gains. I don't think it multiplies or that you gain more muscle from your lifting just because you go on testosterone, just because you go on anabolic steroids. I don't believe that your lifting stimulates more growth. I don't think there's any reason to think that it does. Like there's not a synergistic uh, effect, meaning synergy equal, it would be like one plus one equals three. All right, the sum of the effects is higher than the two would be separately added together. I don't believe that happens with anabolics uh, or testosterone plus training. I think that they each just have their own additional effect that they do as far as muscle mass gains go. And I don't think it goes beyond that. That's just my opinion. Um, and I think that's the reason we see guys who go on large amounts of steroids who can train stupidly. They can train bad. They can do things in the gym that really shouldn't stimulate very good muscle growth, yet they gain huge amounts of muscle. And that guys who train more intelligently and better on very on similar high doses of gear don't always gain significantly more muscle. They might gain a little more muscle, but they don't gain much more muscle than the other guys. At a certain threshold, most of your muscle gains just seem to come from the drugs you're on. Uh, not necessarily the way that you train in terms of muscle mass. Uh, however, training performance can vary, particularly when it comes to sport specific things and specificity of training and specific performance elements you perform because those have a neurological component. Uh, they have a component completely separate from your muscle tissue and your muscle size, meaning like uh, how fast you can turn on motor units, how strong you are through a certain range of motion or a joint angle. Those are things that you train and the way that you train, and I don't just mean training with weights, I mean training with throwing a football, training with jumping. All right, there performance elements there that are related to motor skills and even bench pressing is a motor skill squatting is a motor skill just like throwing a football just like kicking a football just like throwing a baseball those are all motor skills and they are not the same thing as what happens in the muscle tissue so you have to remember when you're training there's an effect uh, regarding what happens in the muscle tissue and there is an effect regarding what happens in the nervous system so that's, that's different also because the steroids don't necessarily enhance the motor skill effects. They don't enhance the motor unit learning. They enhance the structural proteins inside the muscle tissue. So um, that is separate as well. So that, that does factor in that people who train different ways do get much stronger and better at certain forms of performance um, differently, even if they're on the same levels of gear, meaning someone who trains differently while on a similar amount of testosterone to another athlete is going to get a different response as far as the motor skills go, but they're both going to gain similar levels of muscle mass due to the drugs. And again, I don't think the training itself has an enormous effect on how they gain muscle from the drugs. In fact, once the drug doses go high enough, I don't think training how you choose to train uh, has a very significant effect or a large effect on how the muscle grows. Like, I don't think the muscle cares once you're on 2,000 milligrams of testosterone, uh, you know, junkie ward type stacks. <laughs> I don't think that how you choose to train your biceps will affect how they grow much, meaning a guy who does one heavy set of six on weighted chin-ups, I don't think he gains significantly different muscle mass in the bicep at those sort of drug doses in the guy who chooses to do 10 sets of 10 with concentration curls for the bicep with a lighter weight and more volume. Um, I think as long as they're stimulating the muscle, I think the drugs will handle most of the muscle growth. Uh, and that's, that's the reason you see so many very large bodybuilders or even very large athletes who put on tremendous amounts of muscle on the drugs irrespective of how they train. They can use dramatically different training styles that all gain huge amounts of muscle and they can use very, very inefficient or ineffective training methods that are really downright dumb sometimes and still gain huge amounts of muscle. But the important thing to remember here is that when we're talking about gaining muscle from testosterone, like large amounts of muscle, you are talking about people who are using many times the normal range 
Um, you don't see huge amounts of muscle mass difference based purely upon testosterone levels when you're in the normal healthy range. You know, if you start suffering from low testosterone, like clinically low testosterone, like there's a medical problem, you might need TRT, uh, that's different because you'll notice even women, some of those men are dropping down to almost female level testosterone in some cases, and women gain less muscle than men. Women gain muscle at best, what, 50 to, 50 to 70% of the rate that a man does. Uh, and that's in the best case of scenario. 70% would be, uh, you know, very, very rare. That's probably a best case scenario. So maybe half of the muscle that a man could gain from similar amounts of training. That is partially due to the testosterone differences, but you need to understand also uh, the average male also has something like in the range of 30 to 50 times the amount of testosterone that a female has. And females have a wide variation in their testosterone levels also. They have a wider variation than males do in terms of percentages. Uh, it's just that even a woman with really high testosterone, still, the average male still probably has 25 times as much testosterone as she has. Um, so yeah, that does seem to, you see it there, but again, you're talking about a massive difference in testosterone levels. So just like when you see someone go on a study with five or 600 milligrams of testosterone, you do see very significant differences in muscle mass, but you were talking about many times, five or six times the amount of testosterone that a human male produces who's healthy, who's a healthy, virile young man. And then you've got to remember, you're seeing bodybuilders taking even larger amounts. Again, Jerry Ward, 2,000 milligrams was admitted. Um, Rich Piana, 4,500 milligrams. You see where we're going here? You know, 600, you go to 2,000, that's over three times. So you're five to six times the normal amount times another three. That's like 15 to 18 times the normal amount. Um, Rich Piana, 4,500. Again, you're talking about another nine-fold increase over four times, so 40 to 50 times the testosterone that a normal male has. So again, you have to understand, these. it's not just like they have a little more testosterone, it's an enormously higher amount of testosterone, guys who are injecting copious amounts. So we're talking about an apples to oranges comparison here. It's really important that we don't get these two things confused uh, because they are very, very different at the end of the day. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.